Hello and welcome to Cheetah TV. My name is Brian Badger from the Cheetah Conservation Fund. Now as we continue our series of videos giving you an insight into all the projects and the initiatives and the different work that the Cheetah Conservation Fund does in Namibia, in Somaliland and in fact around the world, this time I want to kind of touch upon the impacts of the pandemic, particularly on the veterinary side. Now with the restrictions, both for human um, kind of transportation, uh, but also the supply chain has been hugely affected. So I got a chance to speak to Dr. Paul Set, who's the veterinarian at CCF, and asked him about the challenges that him and his team uh, have been facing throughout 2020 and into 2021. Now, don't forget, if you want any more information about CCF, you can visit our website at cheetah.org and there you'll find scientific papers and resource materials and general information on the work that the Cheetah Conservation Fund does. Well, I would ask you, if you do like the video before you leave, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel. It really does help us grow. In the meantime, let's hop across to Namibia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so joining us from Namibia is Paul Set, who's the uh, resident vet at CCF. Hi, Paul, how are you doing? Great, great. How are you doing, Brian? I'm doing very, very well, thank you. So how are you coping with, uh, with all the COVID-19 and, and, and bits and pieces like that? How are you coping over there? Well, um, it's quite difficult, to be honest. Uh, but of course, being a veterinarian, um, hu human life's, um, life is uh, definitely affected. That makes a little bit, um, it makes it quite difficult to interact and mingle with other people. But uh, we continue with our role, that's uh, to saving the animal health and uh, ensuring that all our animals are very healthy and uh, they are all in good shape. So definitely, a, Unprecedented time, uncertainty is quite playing a role, but uh, we are being um, optimistic. So when people think about um, a veterinarian at, at CCF, they, they may, may think mm -hmm. that you're, you know, you're working on cheetahs all day, every day. Uh, and I know for a fact that's not the case, but, but what, what can you tell people about that? Well, to be honest, cheetahs are, well, it's cheetah conservation fund. So many people definitely have uh, the idea that you're only dealing with cheetahs here. But there are quite a lot of other animal species that we deal with. Um, it's a collective uh, animal husbandry facility where we, only, we don't only deal with cheetahs, we deal with um, live, livestock guarding dogs, we deal, we deal with um, um, milking goats, we deal with um, um, livestock in general, like cattle and all that. So in a collective, of all animal species, to be honest. There's wildlife on the farm. There's quite a lot of other animals as well. Yeah, so, I mean, CCF is a, is a very holistic organization. So, mm -hmm. um, but by definition, you know, you're gonna have a, a different species of animals. But, um, mm -hmm. so with the, with the livestock guarding dogs, for instance, I mean, a lot, when, when you're dealing with the, with the newborns right from birth to the moment that they go off to their new farms, um, mm -hmm. I would imagine the, the veterinary department is, is heavily involved on a daily basis with that. Yeah, with the, with the newborns, we definitely have to ensure that they're healthy from the onset. We need to make sure that they get all their vaccinations up to date. We make sure that they have got all their deworming and they have a very good healthy lifestyle uh, on, here on the farm. And also quite important what you do is we try to uh, establish a relationship with the, with, the, with the owners on the farms where they are going to maintain this same kind of principle to ensuring that these animals are healthy and uh, kept uh, as healthy as possible all the time. I would imagine with, with all the animals, you know, with the livestock guarding dogs and, and when you're working with the farmer training uh, and uh, it's very, very much the preventative side of medicine mm -hmm. that, that you focus on. Mm -hmm. Yes, I focus mostly on the preventative medicine, uh, which is quite important because if you focus on preventative medicine, you, you keep out a lot of costs. It's easier to prevent than to treat. Uh, and that is what you try to focus on. 
And with the farmers, it, it, it's, it's not as easy as just, you know, uh, popping down the road that takes a couple of minutes to, 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 the, um, to the veterinarian or, or anything. You know, sometimes it can be a five, six, seven hour drive. Um, yep. So the, that, that even puts more emphasis on the, um, on the preventative side. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, because... Well, the costs are quite are quite heavy, to be honest. To be running around and making sure that you reach out to people, you get the right message across, it can be quite very costly because of the diverse um, um, space around the country. You know, farm, farms are so so much sparsely um, located. There's quite a distance between one farm and the other. So it's very important to uh, to get the information uh, in an efficient way to keep costs. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can t totally see that. And and when we when we talk to um, other people that have to have to travel, we know that the uh, that the problems facing just getting around, you know, getting getting to the mm -hmm. people is is a problem mm -hmm. almost on it on its own. So so it's great when when the uh, the preventative side is, is given such um, such mm -hmm. importance, you know, and, and and that goes on. So. When um, going going back to the cheetahs, the uh, I would imagine that the the most intense time is when um, when a rescue cheetah comes in because then the time factors are so much. So so can yeah. you take us through. You know, if 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 a if a cheetah comes in that's been rescued from a farm, for instance, you know what what kicks into gear? What what what's the 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 first process that you would have to go through? Well, uh, for me as a veterinarian, I I don't deal with um, with the cheetah husbandry. I only deal with the workouts where uh, there is a team that deals with the husbandry part. They take care of the cheetahs by feeding them all that. So what I do personally, um, I do the workup on the cheetahs. The husbandry team will tell me when we'll need to do workup on the cheetah. I need to prepare the drugs that we need to use. I need to anesthetize the cheetah. I need to make sure that the cheetah is um, is, is, is still healthy under anesthesia. I need to make the right calculation. And if anything can go wrong, it's when a cheetah wakes up on the table and the veterinarian is in charge of everybody, not only the cheetah, but the people involved as well. So it, it's quite strenuous. It's quite a lot of work that has to be put into, into place. And you make, need to make sure that um, the animal wakes up in a, in a very, very calm manner. Otherwise, you know, cheetahs, especially if they are wild, they, they wake up and they're in a strange environment. They can harm the harm themselves quite a lot yeah you mentioned the husbandry team uh, you know you with 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 working with uh, you know even just using the word team and, and ccf has got many many teams so mm -hmm. the, the 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 collaboration and the cooperation between departments um is 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 incredibly important and and, mm -hmm. and makes your job achievable is is that right yeah um it's quite important that you have to have a um, a collective effort from all the departments because uh, there's quite a lot of uh, in the mingling and uh, collaboration that has to go hand in hand. The, the, the departments have to work quite closely. Like from my point of view, I, I, I work with mo most of the departments at, at CCF because um, they all have um, animal that they take care of and the veterinarian has to be involved in that process. So it's very important that you have to work as a collective and as a team. And I think it's the only way that you can achieve the the best results in the end. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, it it obviously works with the amount of uh, the, the animals that that come and go and and that are cared for by CCF. So it, it's a it's kind of a proven formula. So the when you're out in in Namibia where you are now and and you're working. Um, you're you're going to be reliant on outside sources as well. It's not just with the uh, um, with with the team um, actually at CCF. So you know the I would imagine that it's it's kind of difficult sometimes getting you know drugs, medications, and and equipment. Um, so so can you tell us a bit about the the, the challenges that 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 face uh, the veterinary team in in Namibia? Well, uh, currently, especially with the um, COVID-19 pandemic, which is ongoing, it's very difficult to get some of the most crucial drugs that you need to use, uh, the most efficient and the most reliable drugs to use because uh, everybody, every other veterinarians or health professionals are all after these drugs. But then the market is very, um, 
it's very narrow at the moment and uh, the import of these drugs into the country has also been severely affected by the uh, closed borders or by the movement control and all that. So it's very, very difficult. And we have currently just working with what we have and try to improvise quite a lot in many instances. Yeah, and, and that, that's what I've, I've, I've been and worked in Africa for a, for a long time. And that always amazes me. You know, the phrase Bush mechanics comes in, you know, there's <laughs> no use complaining about it. You know, just look at what you've got and we'll get the job done. So, uh, yeah. You know, I, I would I would imagine that 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 kind of blows people's minds um, initially, but you, you kind of have to get into that mindset. You know, you you kind of have mm -hmm. to make the best of what you've got. You know, and I'm and I'm sure that that you you've been very uh, inventive in, in in some of the processes that you've had to develop over 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 the time. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Um, you know, I think. Also, I think um, in, at certain times when you're put under pressure and when you don't have the most reliable resources, it also gives you time to, to introspect and to reinvent new, new things which you never thought of using before. And I also think it's quite important because you need to develop other strategies so that when you're faced or with times like this, you, you have an experience and exposure to how to handle and go through it uh, without any, any, any uh, difficulties. It has it has its, its it has its benefits and also disadvantages. But I think if you just go through it with optimism, it will definitely uh, be an easy easy walk through. Yeah, every day is a school day, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <True. laughs> so you know, and that that is 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 priceless when you're seven hours into the bush and and yeah. having to deal with something. So it kind of puts you into that mindset, which is which is admirable. You know, and I'm sure mm -hmm. um, a lot of Western vets were, uh, uh, admire your your um, ingenuity. You know, to 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 do that. So, mm -hmm. you, we when we was talking about the uh, the preventative side, uh, we also go out into the communities. Um, so, yeah. it's just a case of of being at the centre. So, can you can you tell us briefly about um, some of the community projects that are, are going on as far as the veterinary care goes? Uh, I personally just returned from um, Heroland. Heroland is about um, 150 kilometers east of um, CCF um, farm. Um, I went into Heroland, I went to do rabies vaccination on, on dogs there. And um, the issue is it's quite important to go out into these communal areas because these communal areas are very far from, from towns. People there don't have the means to travel to towns. So that's why we, we out with, we thought it's very important that we go into these communities, try to assist them in terms of um, vaccinating their dogs against rabies and also doing a normal or a regular health check on their livestock. Uh, the rabies vaccination is, has been very, very welcomed by these communal areas because the people don't have the, um, the services close by, the government services are not as close by, and they really do appreciate us going out there because we are doing an outreach pro uh, project which they, they don't pay for in the first place. And uh, it helps them a lot also to just uh, come close to their animals because rabies has been going on for many, many years. And we're trying to help the government uh, in eradicating rabies in Namibia. Yeah. So when, you, um, when, you, when you've got like uh, needs and stuff like that, um, we're, we're heavily reliant on kind of donations, um, both financially uh, and and also equipment as well. So, can you tell us some of the equipment that that you use on a regular basis that's being donated from our supporters um, in the outside world, as it were? Um, well, currently we use quite a lot of the radio, uh, the ultrasound. Ultrasound is quite comes in quite handy on a daily basis, and the the radiography as well, the X-ray machine that it, that is it, and we. The consumables that you use on a daily basis, your syringes, your needles, and some of the drugs as well. Um, well, it's quite a lot. Of, it's quite a lot of products and uh, consumables that we use on a daily basis, which are all coming from donors. I, I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, again, it, it's um, you know with with I know with zoos and and veterinary facilities and stuff like that. They uh, some sometimes it, it 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 may seem that it's kind of trivial stuff. You know, it's not your big heavy drugs or your big heavy machinery, like you said before. Mm -hmm. So even just the consumables are not mm -hmm. all 
products um, available um, readily. So, so those mm -hmm. donations uh, are, are very, you know, gratefully received. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely, that's that's correct, Brian. And uh, we really, really, really appreciate it because they just make our work um, efficient. It, that's we are doing the work that we're doing because uh, we have all this at, at hand. Otherwise, it would be a, a big struggle. That, that's <clears throat> that's great to hear because again, we, we don't like to assume anything. So when when it comes directly from um, the facility, um, it, mm -hmm. it, it helps people understand a little bit more of, of how important all, all of these bits and pieces are. So with CCF, it's it's also um, a teaching facility as well. So um, with with interns, not just veterinary interns, but other interns, um, do you, do you sense that value on exposing the the interns to to that your side of the operation? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I think. Um, with the veterinary team being quite diverse and dynamic and uh, here at CCF doing quite a lot in terms of um, um, health healthcare, the interns do get quite a lot of exposure uh, in terms of um, uh, seeing how 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 to to go about in a in a daily on a daily basis as a vet, how to manage, how to uh, to facilitate, coordinate, and all that. And I think it's very important that they learn. There's especially many who are studying, they, they get quite a lot of um, uh, con um, uh, um, con commitment and uh, they get encouraged. Yeah, there's only so much you can learn from a book. So to yeah. <laughs> seeing it in, in that live context, you know, it yeah. is priceless and, it, and it's an experience. I'm sure that uh, hundreds of interns over the years um, will, yeah. will never ever forget. Yeah. So. So, Paul, I'm, I'm, I really appreciate you, you, you uh, sparing the time to, to join us. I know how busy you are out there, um, but thank you very much for all you do. Thank you for, um, you know, looking after the cheetahs as well as the goats and the dogs and, 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 and educating the next generation of, of conservationists. So stay well. Thank you very much. And hopefully I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you for having me. If you want to learn more about that project or any of the projects that CCF are involved with both in Namibia and around the world and also to make a donation or to sponsor a livestock guardian dog or a resident cheetah, please visit our website at cheetah.org. Now, if you like the video, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel. And you can also set the reminder for further episodes on Cheetah TV. Thanks very much for joining us and I'll see you again next time.